Hi, welcome to Desi Plaza TV. Today I do have Matt Rinaldi who is competing for the House of Representative for District 115. Hi Matt, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I am doing good, uh, Matt. So to begin with, could you just tell us about yourself, uh, which is not in Wikipedia, and <laughs> <laughs> how many years have you been in politics and why did you choose uh, politics? Why did you choose to come into politics? Well, I've been, um, I've been in the Texas House for two terms right now. I was first elected in 2014. Uh, I'm originally from Connecticut. Uh, my family is actually, uh, my father is from Italy and immigrated here when he was a child. He became naturalized when he was in his 20s. Um, and we, uh, when I was growing up, I, I grew up in a neighborhood that was largely of immigrants and, and, and spoke Italian in the, in the home and uh, grew up with just an admiration for how much they admired America and the opportunity that we provide here. Uh, so as I was growing up, as I was in high school, uh, I wanted to protect that uh, because the laws, the system we have uh, that protects equal opportunity for all and presents this system where anybody truly can succeed uh, is something that, that's so valuable to us. And the best way to serve the people was to, to uh, get into political office so that we could protect the laws uh, that, that, that allow people to be free to do great things. So I was first elected in 2014. Uh, I've served two terms and I'm now running for my third term here. So how tough do you think this battle is going to be? Um, well, every election's a battle um, here in, uh, in Texas. And we're in a, we're in a close district and, and uh, the Democratic Party is very energized this election. However, I think in the end, uh, we're going to come out victorious. Uh, the fact is, Governor Abbott, um, the Republicans in the House have created an economy in the state of Texas that's really unmatched. We have been the economic driver of job growth in this country for the past 10 years. 3.9% uh, unemployment, 24 straight months of economic growth. We, we're, we're truly thriving and it's because we've had a government that's generally left people to be free. So could you tell us about what all major topics that you have addressed in the last two terms? Uh, well, the, the last two terms, we've passed two budgets that have uh, been balanced budgets that have, that have kept the growth in spending within inflation plus population. And what that means is we haven't raised your taxes, which is obviously very good. Um, in those two terms, we actually cut taxes by several billion dollars. We had a 25% cut in the franchise tax. Uh, which there are so many of your viewers who are business owners that have that have benefited from that. We actually raised the homestead exemption, uh, ten thousand uh, dollars for your school taxes, which has cut taxes for so many. Uh, we still have a ways to go because local entities have been raising property taxes, and that's the governor's top priority for this session, and it's something that I hope we 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 address as well. Uh, and in the midst of that, uh, education, we've we've increased education funding by four billion dollars. Um, which I, of course, support, and uh, education's a, a top priority for me. And we've reformed CPS to protect our vulnerable children in the system. We've provided more money for CPS. We've provided more caseworkers so that we could protect these vulnerable children. Um, so all in all, Texas is doing wonderfully, and we're doing wonderfully because we have a government that functions. And we have a government that works and respects individuals, respects their freedom, keeps taxes and regulations low. And if given a chance for this term, what are what is the priorities that are in your agenda, which are in the the first few things which you would like to address? Lower property taxes and stronger schools. I mean, plain and simple. So so many of your viewers are being taxed out of their homes by skyrocketing property taxes. Here in America, we're we're about property ownership. You shouldn't have to pay rent to the government to own your home after you've paid off your mortgage. So we want to lower property taxes. Uh, by uh, allowing you a veto over large property tax increases passed by your local government. We also want to use state funds to buy down your property taxes so that your property taxes actually don't stop growing, they actually go down. Um, and stronger schools. Uh, we want to increase the state funding of, of, of schools. We want to uh, eliminate the Robin Hood tax that re-diverts our local tax money to other districts and make sure that our public education is not only the, the best in the country but the best in the world. And what are your plans for the immigrant communities within your district? Um, plans for the immigrant communities within our district. Uh, I'm a strong proponent of immigration. 
Uh, my fa- I come from a family of immigrants. I'm actually the first person in, in my, my family line that isn't an immigrant. Uh, so I think we need to encourage legal immigration while discouraging illegal immigration, which is essentially just cutting in line. Um, what I do think we need to do is address the backlog, the immigration backlog, and the convoluted system that has hurt so many in the South Asian community. I think first and foremost, we need to pass Republican Mike Lee's bill in the, in the uh, U.S. Senate, which would uh, institute a merit-based immigration system and remove the country caps that are keeping uh, so many uh, South Asians in line. I think the current line for EB2 visas in India is about 150 years. That's absolutely unacceptable. We need to uh, we need to eliminate the country caps, and we need to uh, exclude dependents from any cap at all, and increase the the total um, the total cap for uh, employment based immigration. Because we want to we want to incentivize people to come here to live to work. Our country was born on immigrants. And we need to keep it that way. But while at the same time making sure that we actually have laws in place and enforce them, so that people don't cut in line. Um, you know, I- I- illegal immigration is not a victimless crime, and the victims are often the people who do things the right way. And do you have any specific plans for the South Asian communities uh, within your district? Um, specific plans for the South Asian communities in our district? Uh, yeah. I- I'd have to say, uh, Governor Abbott just got back from a trip to India, so this is very much first and foremost on our minds. I would say, uh, arguably, that Governor Abbott, myself, uh, the South Asian community doesn't have two greater advocates uh, in, in uh, Texas government, or has never had two greater advocates than we, than we have. Uh, myself, my office actually sponsored the first um, Indian American Cultural Day at the state capitol, where I know so many of your viewers came down to come visit us and meet their legislators, and, and in return, we exposed, uh, we exposed our legislators to South Indian culture that night, and uh, it was really a, a great way to get people civically involved. I also proposed a bill that would allow um, uh, South Asians to uh, purchase fireworks so that they could celebrate Diwali. And actually, that would have been the first time that Diwali was mentioned in state code uh, in Texas, which I think was a big step. Um, and I also, uh, I also think we need to address the immigration backlog at a federal level and make it easier to immigrate here legally, uh, encourage it, and remove the, the, the ridiculous backlogs from uh, countries like India and other South Asian nations. And what kind of outreach have you done so far with the different communities uh, within your district? Well, I, I, I do outreach almost every day in, in, in my community. I live in, a, in a, a nearby community that's over 90% South Asian. So my wife and I, uh, we celebrated uh, Ganesh Chaturthi with our uh, neighbors uh, recently. We plan on celebrating Diwali with them as we do every year. Tomorrow I'm going to be uh, at the, the Mahatma Gandhi Memorial um, for the Peace Walk, and I'll be speaking there. Uh, so our everyday lives are, we, we, we live in this community and participate every day in outreach to this community. Uh, in contrast, my, my opponent doesn't even live in our district. Um, she lives outside the district um, and hasn't lived and worked among us. So what is the biggest issue that you feel that your uh, district is facing and how do you plan to solve it? Okay, so the biggest uh, biggest issues are property tax and education, and and the first way I would solve uh, the property tax issue is to stop stop skyrocketing property taxes. The governor's plan, which I fully support, is to allow voters veto power over any property tax increase more than two point five percent, and that's not only rate, but that's also including increase in the value of of your assessed value of your home. So your taxes should not go up more than 2.5% per year without you being able to vote against it. And that's the first thing we're going to do. Second thing we're going to do is try to reduce your taxes and uh, increase the state share of education spending at the same time. The plan I have, um, and I'm trying to get uh, momentum behind, would actually use surplus state funds to buy d- over our uh, state spending cap to buy down uh, school uh, maintenance and operation property taxes. Um, so that uh, that tax rate actually decreases over time. If we had instituted that plan 12 years ago, the current school MNO property tax rate would be zero with the state using all with the state contributing all of those funds. That means your property tax bill would have been 40 percent less. We really need to do that because people are truly getting priced out of their homes. And what is the difference that you see between you and your opponent? Um, I have a record two straight years 
of outreach and advocacy for the South Asian community that I, I believe is unprecedented in an office in Texas. I have worked to lower property taxes and have been successful at lowering property taxes. I've worked to increase education funding and uh, make education better successfully and advocate for our, our children with the CPS bill. I've been tremendously successful at keeping Texas the economic driver in this nation. And my opponent simply hasn't. My opponent has spent the last um, 15 years or the better part of the last 15 years as a gay, lesbian, and transgender activist. She doesn't have any experience in government whatsoever. And simply put, her priorities are elsewhere. They're not for reducing our property taxes. They're not for making better schools. For example, my opponent has come out against allowing voters a veto over uh, property tax increases passed by local government. I think that's simply the wrong way to go. I don't think any of your viewers think their property taxes are too low. Apparently, my opponent does. And your opponent believes that you are a conservative person who believes in uh, serving only a small segment of people. So what's your take on that? Well, I, I think that's absolutely incorrect, except for the fact that it says I'm a conservative. I am a conservative, but what that means is that we largely like to keep the government out of your business so that you're, you can thrive and business owners can thrive and that we create jobs and economic growth that benefits everybody. And the results are there. We've done that in Texas. The Texas economy is the driving engine of economic growth in our country right now as it has been for the past decade. And that's because of conservative policies that have generally limited regulation and kept taxes low. Um, I know my opponent uh, wants to spend more and that spending would result in higher taxes. She had wanted to spend the rainy day fund on ongoing education expenses. Well, if we spend the rainy day fund, how do we raise the money on in an ongoing basis? Uh, a state income tax? No, I, I don't think that's the way to go. In fact, the governor and I support a constitutional amendment to prohibit a state income tax at any point in the future from ever being instituted. Because we need to keep the economic growth that benefits all of us. And coming to the Century City Law Bill. Uh, yes. So it's like your opinion believe that you have... Uh, passed a racial charged assumption on the protestant who are there that who are, whoever were over there ha, are illegal to the country and mm -hmm. you have also called eyes on the protestant who are against the bill so what's your take on that okay well well the first um i guess i'll i'll start with the second and then go on to sure. the sanctuary city bill yeah. so th there's two different points you made one was um one was something where in individuals who had come into the texas house uh, had signs that said, we're illegal and here to stay. Um, they had said they were I here in the country illegally. And they were shutting down the Capitol, becoming increasingly violent, and resisting police officers. So we called law, I called law enforcement on those individuals. My opponent doesn't seem to recognize the difference. Illegal immigration's bad, legal immigration's good. And those are two different things. And an increase in illegal immigration, like my opponent wants to, to, to essentially make legal, um, hurts those people who have worked so hard to come here legally and navigate our system. Like the, the hundreds of thousands of people coming here from South Asia every, every year. Um, so again, illegal immigration is different from legal immigration. And legal immigration, we want to encourage uh, and we want to encourage people to come here and share in our economic success. But we need to do it through the legal system. Um, SB4 is a different bill. It's the Sanctuary City Bill. What that bill says is, effectively, we will enforce our immigration laws against criminals who are in police custody for other crimes, not immigration crimes, other crimes like murder, rape, robbery. Um, if we're going to come up with a legal immigration system that works. I think we need to make it easier to come here and get a job. However, I think we all can agree that we need to at least enforce our immigration laws against people who are committing crimes against our people. We need to make Texas safe. And the Sanctuary City Bill was a public safety bill that made Texas safe. And it is believed that your opponent has a lot of support from the Republicans uh, who are actually not satisfied with the way that you have represented the district. So. Is it true and what's your take on that? 
I, I think my opponent is living outside of a world of reality <laughs> on that. We actually just had a poll come back in that showed that our uh, uh, we were retaining almost 100% of Republican voters. I, I, I think we were we were losing maybe 1% of them, which is uh, an incredibly uh, small number. Uh, Republicans are almost overwhelmingly supporting our campaign, as are uh, many moderates, independents, and Democrats. And the reason why they're supporting our campaign is because Texas has been extremely effective through the leadership of Governor Abbott and, and, and my leadership as well, of reaching across the aisle and passing bills with bipartisan support. Uh, the last two budgets were passed with bipartisan support. Um, we've passed uh, bills that help our public schools with bipartisan support. And I don't know why we would want to change leadership when Texas has been functioning so effectively to the benefit of so many in our community. And coming to the funding of the schools, mm -hmm. and uh, there's, uh, it, it's like there are certain schools wherein uh, there are which which do not have enough funds. That that is, they they're using a plastic bucket instead of crumbs, and uh, and that's one point. And the second thing is the there is no salary hike for the retired teachers. So for this funds, how are you planning to get funds? Is it like you're going to make some changes to the laws, or mm -hmm. how are you get? going to get those funds to their district? Well, we pass a budget uh, every every year, and over the past two budgets, we've increased funding for our public schools uh, by $4 billion, which I supported. And uh, we will continue to cover enrollment growth as well. One of the issues, though, that, that results in what you're talking about is in-classroom spending. And the problem has been we've had this skyrocketing growth in education spending, but the increased money hasn't gone in the classroom to teachers' salaries, to supplies, to, to where our students can greatest uh, benefit from it. A lot of this spending, almost, almost entirely this increase in spending, has gone into administration. And you know what? A, a, a student can benefit from a teacher getting paid more so we can attract the best teachers a lot more than we need another bureaucrat administering the school district. Um, we need to encourage the increases in spending to go to the classroom when they're best benefit the students. And, and I proposed last session and fought for uh, a, a teacher pay raise because I think the teachers most directly benefit the students. You know, I, I just want to point to, we, we spend about $12,000 per student in Texas. So if we have a classroom of 25 students, that's approximately 300, oh, just a little under $300,000 per year. If you had a classroom of 25 kids, you can educate them with $300,000 per year and pay a teacher a good salary. We should be focusing on doing that in Texas. As far as teachers' retirement, we've consistently funded teachers' retirement where there's been a shortfall, and I think we do need to continue to fund teachers' retirement. We need to keep the promises we made to our retired teachers. Again, the education spending increases need to be directed towards students in the classroom and not to administration. And finally, your, your opponent again believes that your rhetorics uh, or your, your language, your votes are against immigrants. So is this justified or what's your take on that? I always find that my opponent, uh, you know, it's not justified. My, my opponent never points to specifics. Um, she just makes general accusations. But no, I, I think I've, I've been incredibly pro-immigrant. My family is a family of immigrants. <laughs> my father is an immigrant. Um, and my community is an immigrant community that we live in every day. Um, I, I celebrate holidays with them. Uh, they celebrate holidays with us. Uh, we live in a community where we, we share our varying cultures and it's, it makes Irving a great place to live. And what do you think would be the most difficult aspect to win this race? Um, well, I, I think the national climate right now is probably weighing down on, on, on Republicans down ballot. But what I think voters need to understand is, um, you know, this is, this is Greg Abbott uh, and uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Um, and it's, it's the Republican Party. Uh, under their leadership in the state of Texas has created the greatest economic growth um, in our nation of, in the last decade of, of, of any state. And we've all benefited from that. And the desire to change that and be more like California, a, a, a state where so many people are fleeing to come here uh, to benefit from our prosperity is, is, is simply a, a bad move. Um, and that's what my opponent wants to do. 
I could give you uh, an example. Um, the, a U-Haul truck from California to Texas costs twice as much as a U-Haul truck going from Texas to California. And that's because people want to come to Texas and they want to share in the economic prosperity. And I'm not going to say that was, that was caused by our government and our leadership, but that we stayed out of the way and let individuals and businesses thrive. So <clears throat> what are, what, what's your plan and how and what are you going to do to make your district a safe place to live? Um, well, um, I, I think we need to uh, be very serious about crime. I think we need to focus. Um, I think we need to focus enforcement on serious crimes, um, murder, rape, property crimes. I think are very serious, um, and I think we've been doing that. We've been uh, reforming our criminal justice to tackle both an overcriminalization and an undercriminalization problem and focusing more on enforcing those crimes that, that, that truly have victims and that, that hurt the community. I think we need to support our police. I think we need to support our law enforcement and give them the support they need. And I think we need to prosecute crimes when they occur. So Matt, let's take a break over here. Okay. And uh, after the break, we'll discuss about some of the issues that Texas uh, is facing. Sure. And uh, I would like to have your opinion on them so we can go one after other. Absolutely. That'd be great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.